or police brutality. No, you, you don't. You don't get it a lot, but it's summertime too. I the only person I got then, from DDC. Let the record reflect. We have reconvened with all members present. Pat Rowe is absolutely excused. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. May I have a motion for the executive minutes of July 13, 2015. So moved. Second. And we have already been discussed. Roll call vote, please. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Abstain. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. May we have a motion for the regular minutes of July 13, 2015. So moved. Second. Any discussion? We had the one addition that was at our uh, places. Uh, anything else? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Abstain. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Great. Welcome all. It's nice to have such a uh, nice crowd in the middle of uh, summer here. A couple of announcements, and I've got to come down and do a few presentations. We just start with the, uh, from the library, um, and uh, the library in Madison Senior Center continue to co-sponsor summer seminars held at the library on Monday afternoons and Thursday mornings. Upcoming seminars are James Michael, Broadway Baritone on July 30th, and Madeline Farron speaking on the Supreme Court on August 3rd, and Dr. Roger Knowles speaking on effective treatments for Alzheimer's disease on August 6th. And this Wednesday night at 7 p.m., the film Slumdog Millionaire will be so shown at 7 p.m. And next Saturday, August 1st, celebrate the finale of a summer reading program with a hero story festival for all ages. And the library anticipates that their picture room renovation will begin late August. First step of the process will be ceiling abatement project, which will involve closing the library. More details will be announced once we have final dates. Also, in case you've noticed what this cup is. Tomorrow, the uh, Borough of Madison Mayor's All-Stars will be trying to defend our title, because our name is at the bottom there, Borough of Madison. It's the annual Quest, versus, Quest Diagnostics versus Madison softball game at Dodge Field. Even if you're not playing, it should be very entertaining. And uh, we have food for the fa whole family and some great music from group therapy. So be there, starting at 5.30. <laughs> Come on down for some presentations. Mary Romano, please. Morano, sorry. Mary, please come forward. <laughs> Sorry about that, decided to transpose the M and the R there for a second, but anyway. <laughs> this is very special. We're in the middle of summer, so we may not be thinking about school, but I'm sure all the children in the room are looking forward to going back to school. And the Right, and the parents are looking forward to their children going back to school, but most importantly, they're looking forward to their children being safe as they walk back to school. And, and so we have a special presentation here recognizing Mary as the 2015 National Crossing Guard of the Year. Whereas Mary Marano, a crossing guard for the Borough of Madison, was named 2015 National Crossing Guard of the Year by Advanced Safety LLC, and whereas a longtime Madison resident, Mary has been a crossing guard for the borough for 17 years. And whereas 
Mary is also a field training instructor for new crossing guards who log hours on the job with Mary before working at their individual posts. And whereas stationed at Central Avenue and Britain Street, one of the busiest in Madison, Mary was nominated for this honor by her fellow crossing guard, Andy Cobb, and received recommendations from the Madison Police Department and her peers. And whereas Mary's reliability, competency, and are greatly appreciated by both parents and staff at Central Avenue School, and whereas devoted to the children she cr crosses, Mary knows the names of all the current students, as well as remember the names of all former students and younger siblings. Boy, that's a, we'll be holding it to that. <laughs> whereas in working in all kinds of weather, that cold winter is a long distant memory, but I'm sure, Mary, you still remember. Yeah, no, yeah, you, yeah. Okay, says my, that's good to know. Mary Morano is a dependable crossing guard who takes her responsibilities very seriously. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, Mayor of the Borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby extend sincere congratulations to Mary Morano as recipient of 2015 National Crossing Guard of the Year and express appreciation for her dedication and commitment to the children of the Borough of Madison. Thank you, Mary. Everybody that came out and supported me tonight with this wonderful award. I just love all my children and all the people that are around me. Thank you. We love you. Oh, wait, there's more. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Dan Wirtz. I'm the CEO of Advanced Safety, and uh, I headed the committee that uh, selected Mary for this award. And uh, it was easy to uh, to pick her out of the. Uh, big application pool that we had. Uh, one thing, Mr. Mayor, I think we're going to move this award back to May so that we can, <laughs> so we'll have a little breathing room. Uh, but uh, I do want to congratulate you on, on, a, on a great job. Uh, I've been the lead instructor for school crossing guards in Morris County for, for seven years now, uh, going into my eighth year. And, and our company uh, runs the National Training Center for school crossing guards nationwide. Uh, so it's our honor to award you this uh, plaque and uh, gift certificate, 2015 School Crossing Guard of the Year, uh, Borough of Madison, Mary Morano, awarded for years of service, dedication to the children within the community, competency, and high professional standards. Uh, this is a, uh, certainly a reflection of, of uh, Mary, all the crossing guards in Madison, uh, under the leadership of the Madison Police Department, and uh, the town in Madison as a whole. So I hope you all share in her, her uh, award. Thank you. Uh, Tom Sitch, please come forward. It's not too long ago we swore you in as a volunteer fireman, and um, that's just the tip of the iceberg of what you've been doing, especially with um, what, what I have right here. Congressional Award Gold Medalists. Whereas Congressional Award recognizes hundreds of hours of community service as awarded by the United States Congress to qualifying young Americans ages 14 to 23 years old, and whereas the program consists of six levels of bronze, silver, gold congressional award certificates and bronze, silver, and gold congressional award medals, and whereas each level involves setting goals in four program areas, volunteer public service, personal development, physical fitness, expedition or exploration, and whereas on June 17, 2015, at the United States Capitol in Washington, D.C., 267 young adults from across America received the Congressional Award Gold Medal, Congress's highest award for youth. And whereas at the ceremony, Thomas Sitch, a 2013 Madison High School graduate, was presented the Congressional Award Gold Medal by New Jersey Congress Congressman Rodney Frelinghuysen, 
And whereas to achieve this award, Thomas first focused on his physical fitness goal to overcome health issues. And whereas Tom dedicated over 700 hours to help develop an annual blood drive with multiple locations for volunteer public service. And whereas to accomplish his personal development goal, Thomas became a Madison volunteer firefighter. <coughs> And whereas for his expedition, Thomas, a member of Venture Cruise 77, sponsored by Madison Elks Lodge number 1465, completed a backpacking trek at Philmont Scott Scout Ranch in New Mexico and received a 50-miler award and venturing silver, silver medal. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, Mayor of the Borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby extend sincere congratulations to Thomas Sitch as a recipient of the Congressional Award, Gold Medal, and wish best success in future endeavors. You have made Madison very proud. Congratulations. And with the theme of dedication and uh, leadership, we have some Eagle Scouts. Please step forward. Hanging outside my office is a, um, a little banner signed by Eagle Scouts from uh, many generations. And so we've got, there's actually five more to add to that banner at some point, And we've got four of them here. And we want to recognize your great leadership skills. As I was saying right before the meeting, one of the things I look for on a uh, resume is Eagle Scout. Because that tells me, even if it's you know, you know, a couple years out of college, that early on, that candidate demonstrated leadership skills, demonstrated the ability to work with others, and most importantly in my world, demonstrated getting the job done. So we are here to honor you. Whereas introduced in 1911, the Eagle Scout is the highest rank in the Boy Scouts of America, and whereas to achieve the rank of Eagle Scout, a scout must live by the principles of scout oath and scout law, earn a total of 21 merit badges, and demonstrate service and leadership, including completion of extensive service project. And whereas five scouts of the Boy Scout Tro Troop 7 have achieved the rank of Eagle Scout by completing the following projects. And whereas J Jared Finnerty re refurbished an outdoor courtyard area, including landscaping and building benches at picnic tables at Madison High School. And Nicholas Johansson renovated the rectory basement classroom at St. Vincent's Martyr School by building tables and chairs and installing new lights, painting and cleaning the carpet. And whereas Nicholas Lammy refurbished an outdoor recreation area for the Tucker Apartments senior housing, including landscaping, building benches, and installing a handrail. And William Nixon produced educational videos, demonstrated social skills for special needs children at the Early Care and Learning Council of New Jersey. And Kevin Thompson refurbished an outdoor classroom by improving the ground cover and pond access and, and designing building birdhouses to be placed around the campus of Newark Academy. Now, therefore, I, Robert H. Conley, the mayor of Borough of Madison, on behalf of the governing body, hereby commend these Eagle Scouts for their efforts and dedication to these projects and express best wishes on achieving the rank of Eagle Scout. So I've got uh, one of these for each of you, but at first I'll let you introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your uh, project to the audience here. Hi, uh, I'm Jared Finnerty. Um, as the mayor said that uh, I refurbished the senior high school courtyard at Madison High School. We built about eight or nine uh, picnic tables and uh, put it throughout the courtyard. We did some landscaping as well with mulching and the garden. And then uh, a year after, I uh, wrote a letter to the principal asking for it to be changed from the senior courtyard to the junior and senior courtyard, and that got pushed through. So that was my project. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Nick Johansson. As, uh, as Mayor Conley said, I renovated the basement room of the rectory at St. Vincent Martyr for use by small children for CCD programs. And uh, I completed my project last summer, which made last summer the most stressful of my life. But uh, it was also one of the most rewarding of my life. And uh, we did new paint, we did lights, uh, furniture, and it taught me a lot about how to navigate uh, you know, the crazy world of a construction project and all of the 
uh, approvals and acceptances that have to go on with that, working around people's timetables, and it was a great lesson overall. I'm very grateful for it. Uh, my name is Will Nixon, and as Mayor Conley mentioned, I created three videos uh, for a class of eight to 10 year olds at my mom's school, ECLC in Chatham, which is a school for special needs students that can be educated in the normal public schools uh, in the northern New Jersey area. Um, I came up with the idea because I really love filmmaking. It's what I want to do for my career uh, after college. And um, a lot of the videos that they have, maybe some of you may have seen them, for sort of special needs, um, children with autism, young children, learning social skills are kind of geared much more towards the uh, younger age. And the students at these schools are older, but they have the developmental age of those younger students. And so seeing younger kids modeling these um, social skills were not necessarily as effective as seeing kids our age, maybe older students, kids more um, within their kind of physical developmental range. Um, so we completed that project last September, October, right up against my 18th birthday. Uh, but as Mayor Conley said, it's all about getting it done. And I have these guys up here to, to thank for helping me get there. Um, hello, uh, my name is uh, Nick Lammy. And for my project, like the mayor had talked about for a little while, I went down to the Tuck Apartments, which for anyone who doesn't know, is right down Chateau Thierry, coming out of the high school down Burnett. Um, and I focused on the senior citizens because in my eyes, with having um, my grandfather and my grandmother around for most of my life, um, they're kind of like the forgotten aspect sometimes. So I really wanted to do something down there where they could get out and enjoy the things that we as Boy Scouts take for granted, which is going on trips, going on uh, backpacking and most all four of us here have gone to New Mexico um, which sometimes senior citizens don't get to enjoy so um, me along with these all these guys up here and my troop and a lot of my friends and my family went down there for every Sunday for around two months um, we cleared this whole area uh, which was filled with poison ivy and my mother can attest to getting cortisone shots because <laughs> it was it was rampant uh, but we got it done we mulched the whole area we planted uh, we put in a nice little walkway where they could come out off of the path and kind of pretend they were like in the woods for a little while. Um, and we put in a, like a hundred foot long handrail starting from the bottom because there was a slight incline. So that was kind of the hardest part of the project was figuring out how I was going to get these 30 foot long steel rods um, down to the Tucker Apartments. But it was so much fun. And um, getting the Eagle Scout um, award, I know for all of us up here, was kind of just the climax of our Boy Scouting career. And... Um, it might have not been the best part, but it definitely was one of the hardest, and I think we'll all look back on it and be thrilled that we did it and be thrilled that we did it all together. So also speaking for Kevin Thompson, who's not here, um, his project was fantastic. His birdhouse is down at the, his school down at Newark Academy in Livingston. He did a great job, and um, congratulations to all these guys and to Kevin, and thank you, Mayor and the council members for having us out tonight. Well done. Thank you for all your thanks. And good luck. And I should have uh, mentioned this before, but uh, going back to uh, Mary's proclamation, I, I see Andy Cobb here and many of her uh, fellow uh, crossing guards. So Andy, once, one thing, thank you so much for recognizing the hard work of Mary. And it's, it's one thing to get an award, but to find out it's one of your coworkers that got your name out there is extra special. And can all the uh, crossing guards in the audience please just stand for a second and, and say hello and... Uh... <laughs> Go ahead, Ed. don't be bashful. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for all you do.
And as I always say, you, you are welcome to stay for the full meeting if you want. Uh, <laughs> Or, or you can you can you can catch you can catch it on, on Rosenet or FiOS or Cablevision. <laughs> we'll just wait a second before we go to the uh, reports. Hey, yeah. Huh? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, if, you, you know, that's exactly what I was thinking. Oh my God. There's a little ticket. You better be quiet. You better be quiet. You seem to be an eagle scout. Yeah. All right. Maven, you were thinking. Uh, yeah. no, I, no, I didn't think about that part, but you're absolutely right. <laughs> I'll remind him. I'm going to remind him when I see him. Well, Ray, man, you really know how to clear a room out. He's a great one. He's a great one. Take good care of him. Yep. Not. And John, again, thank you for making sure we recognize the scouts' great effort. <laughs> Reports from committees, community affairs, Ms. Bailey. Thank you, Mayor. Yep. The Madison's Farmer's Market continues to thrive oh, on Central Avenue. Yeah, well, hold, hold, hold on a second. We'll have to... Thank you. We'll, uh... All right, take two. Okay, we have a thriving Farmer's Market on Central Avenue every Thursday until October 15th. The hours are 2 p.m. to 7 p.m. We have live musical performances scheduled each week from 4.30 to 6.30, so please make sure to come. The next Sidewalk Sound Saturday concert is scheduled for this coming Saturday, August 1st on Main Street from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. And a complete schedule of all summer musical events, including the M uh, Museum of Early Trades and Crafts Friday Night Concert Series was included in the July utility bills. The next museum concert is scheduled for Friday, August 7th. Reeds, Rhythm, and All That Brass will be entertaining us. The DDC uh, Madison Arts and Cultural Alliance sidewalk gallery banners are up. There are many beautiful works of art. Make sure to go downtown and check them out. The pieces will be up for auction on Saturday, October 24th at the Gala. And applications and sponsorship information for Bottle Hill Day 2015 are available on rosenet.org. Bottle Hill Day will be Saturday, October 3rd, and will be expanded onto Kings Road this year. Thank you very much, Mayor. Thank you. And for public safety and also uh, public works and engineering for Pat, Mr. Catanello. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, there is no report tonight for the police or fire department. So I'll just jump right into the DPW. Um, so uh, resurfacing signage and striping is complete for Woodland Road, Noe Avenue, Morris Place, Danforth Road, Sherwood Avenue, Longview Avenue, Candlewood, and Fox Chase Road. All signs and striping for the Oak Court neighborhood are complete. A pre-construction meeting with Cefeli Construction will be held uh, this Thursday morning to review the Ridgedale Ave reconstruction project schedule which has a contractual deadline of October 23rd. We've applied for a state grant of $270,000 to help defray the cost to taxpayers. Staff is working on the 2016 road improvement projects including Kinney, West, Lawanica, Terrace, Crescent, Cross, and Cottage Place, anticipating early spring bids next year. The state aid eligible projects such as Prospect and Greenwood Avenues will also be completed later this fall in preparation for summer bids. Uh, sewers, the sewer lining work begins on July 28th and neighborhood notices have been sent. Uh, it will include work authorized in both the 2014 and 2015 budget. Work has been, excuse me, advanced over the last two weeks to replace vertical shaft pumps in the commuter grinder at the Candlewood pump station. Uh, water, the survey of well E is complete and a meeting to review the site plan for the generator and transformer placement replacement is being scheduled. Bids are being received for the generator equipment on August 5th 
and the results of the bid will determine the schedule for construction. The electric, uh, the survey for the new storage building at the utility complex will be complete this week. Staff will then produce a site plan uh, and prepare for building construction. This work also provides the basis for an overall DPW complex master plan to be refined later this year. For the library, a pre-construction meeting with mm, DeSessa, no, I'm sorry, D like cattle and hell, I should be able to get these uh, easy. <laughs> uh, so engineering and construction will be held on Tuesday afternoon to review the rooftop mechanical replacement contract and schedule. Designer EI Associates has been contacted and the initial contractor submittals indicate train equipment will be utilized for the fall construction for five new heating and air conditioning units. Uh, final, uh, just a few more uh, for parks. Quotes have been assembled from six contractors for two projects at the Memorial Park skating rink and soccer field. We hope to start drainage improvement and natural turf replacement projects this fall. Uh, KRE GVRE development engineers have submitted a draft state application to the Bureau of Safe Drinking Water for authorization by the purveyor and distribution operator Madison Water. Application is under review by staff and consultants uh, may be the subject of a future endorsement resolution. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Utilities, Ms. Vitale. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I think one of the most important things that I'm going to talk about tonight is that the uh, forecast for the next few days includes high heat and high electric consumption. Um, we're asking everybody to just really keep a good eye uh, on Rosenet as the borough will be asking the residents to conserve electricity during the hours of 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. Uh, this would include turning off unnecessary electronics and temporarily raising your air conditioning thermostat a, f a couple of degrees. Madison Electric Utility pays close to $3 million a year in peak demand charges, and this bill is based on our consumption during the five hottest days of the year. Even a small reduction in our electricity consumption can help. Um, a little more information is if the, in the event that you may need a cooling center, uh, we will have those open at the Board of Health and the library. And you could go to Rosenet to see when the hours are posted. They're generally 8 to about 4.30 in the afternoon. Um, along with conserving the electricity, I, I, it's one of the most important things, I think, is conserving of water at this point. Um, it, it's very hot, so we have a tendency to start using a lot more water on our lawns and whatever. So, um, you know, if we can stick to the exterior water use, um, on the odd even day based on your, uh, on your house number, that would be really um, uh, a great deal of help. Uh, right now the borough staff has been uh, meeting with the SCMUA to discuss a formal inter interconnection agreement to ensure an adequate water supply of water for all of our residents. Um, also from the water department, while I'm talking about water, um, they, they've had some very busy times. It's a busy time for everybody in the summer. They've had 52 requests for locating and marking underground utilities for homeowners, contractors, and other utilities. Um, they have replaced um, three meters on newly construction homes. Uh, they've checked about 12 curb boxes. Either they had to be replaced or turned on and off. Uh, 11 meters were replaced due to age, uh, leaks or outside register um, installation. Good news is that the emergency generator uh, radiator replacement work at Well B, which is down in Station Road, is in progress, and the Well E redevelopment work has started. The uh, motor was pulled, the casing and shaft removed, and TV monitoring of the well is being performed. Um, there had to be a hydrant on Westerly Avenue that was excavated and moved uh, about three feet back for curbing. Um, the hydrant at the library was repaired and all the fire hydrants in need of painting have been painted and color coded according to the gallons per minute flow uh, and that is ongoing. There's a lot of fire hydrants here. From the electric department, they began installation of new poles on Dogwood Drive 
They installed and transferred three new poles at Park Avenue at 88 Park Avenue, which is the rear driveway, and installed the new secondary cable. And they installed new poles at 37 Crossgates Road for service, and they continue on service upgrades and removals and mark out requests. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Finance and Borough Clerk, Mr. Landrigan. Thank you, Mayor. Madison just received the preliminary tax rate for Morris County and anticipates receipt of our certified tax rate this week. Once we get the green light, the tax collector will mail out the property tax bills for the third and fourth quarter of 2015 and the first and second quarters of 2016. Payment without penalty interest is due 25 days from the date of mailing. If timely payment is not made, state law requires interest to be paid retroactive to August 1st. The tax rate is increasing from 1.778 per $100 of assessed value to 1.840 per $100 of assessed value. The overall increase is 3.49%. The borough's portion of the tax bill went up a half a percent. The county went up approximately 4% and the Board of Education went up about 4.5%. The Board of Education represents 61% of the tax bill you receive. A $500,000 grant award for the MRC project is still pending with Governor Christie. Hopefully he'll sign the legislation and we can further reduce the MRC debt. And finally, the one-year MRC note of $1.7 million is due on August 14th. $165,000 of principal plus $17,000 of interest will be paid down, leaving a balance of approximately $1.5 million, which will be rolled over for a six-month period in February of 2016. The MRC debt will further be paid down with $1 million from the sale of the former Green, Green, Ville, Green Village Road School site to KRE. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. And health, mm -hmm. Mr. Wolkowitz. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, August is uh, Immunization Awareness Month. It, uh, it's as if every month of the year now has a health theme, which is a good idea. Uh, clearly, vaccines are among the safest and most cost-effective ways of preventing disease. And on several occasions, I had the opportunity to talk about the uh, importance of having all children immunized and the status of legislation that's been proposed in the state to make a religious exemption all the more difficult for avoiding in cases where people wish to avoid a, such immunizations. But, uh, however, although we have much emphasis on children, there's good reason for adults to be aware of vaccines as well. One, because of travel. Indeed, there are many parts of the world where it's recommended that you have particular immunizations before you go there, and it's, you can check on that on the State Department website. And uh, as well, there are immunizations now available to reduce the likelihood of getting diseases as one ages. And so there are, in fact, immunizations against shingles and, um, and against pneumonia. So uh, by all means, regardless of your age and regardless of your travel, check into whether you have everything up to date. And if need be, again, it's a very inexpensive way and a very safe way to prevent serious diseases. I also want to mention that the Madison Health Department is maintaining a table at the Madison Farmers Market in conjunction with the Madison Alliance Addressing Substance Abuse, or MASA as most people refer to it, and the Madison Chatham Coalition. And the goal of this participation is to gain a community awareness of the department's public health services as well as exemplify community involvement with other coalitions. Um, I, in, in addition to substance abuse, that table will reflect whatever the topic is for the month. So for July, they were concerned about sun and dangers of too much exposure. And this coming month, it will be immunizations. You go to the farmer's market, you buy healthy food, by all means, put the cherry on, on the cake and say hello to the Madison Health Department while you're there. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to uh, communications and petitions. None received, Mayor. All right, now we're on to the first of two uh, invitations for discussion from the public. This one is limited to items on our agenda discussion or resolutions that are on the consent agenda. Uh, ordinances have hearings. You'll be able to comment those on those during the hearings, or if you want to comment on other ones, you have to wait for the second discussion. 
On our agenda discussion, we have um, the Strategic Planning Utility Committee as will be at our August 10th meeting. So the only item on there right now is open space recreation historic preservation uh, quarterly report or any re resolutions. Anyone wishing to comment, please step forward, state your name, your address, and keep your comments to three minutes or less. Wait, wait, wait. Are you doing the re uh, presentation? Or, yes. Okay, hold, hold up just a second. Yeah, Peter, sorry, Peter. Seeing none for comments, we move on to the open space report. And Peter, you can step over to the uh, our lectern there. And I think we've... We have one. We have yeah. these. Yeah, we, 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 we have them. Yep. Okay, uh, my name is Peter Hiscano, uh, Spring Garden Drive. I've um, been recently elected chairman of the Open Space Committee, and I'm um, here to give a quick report of some of the numbers that we uh, discussed in the past few meetings. Um, remind everyone that we are just an advisory council. We make recommendations. We're not obviously rule of law. Um, starting with the first page, it says Open Space Trust Fund account has the number 315,000. 672 on the top of the pages, it looks like this. I um, just want to quickly go over a couple of the numbers and, and bring everyone up to date on what's happening with the funding. Um, starting with the inflows, uh, obviously it's it, it tax levy $400,000. Um, MAF contribution is $50,000. That's through uh, raffle tickets and donations, et cetera. Uh, below that's thirty-seven thousand dollars, one eighty-five. That's from field rentals to various organizations that use the MRC fields uh, behind the high school. Uh, interest is obviously minimal because everything has to be liquid. Uh, the outflows, the Museum of Early Trades, one hundred and ten thousand. Um, this is an ongoing project because the building is very old and it's got a slate roof and it's got a leaky basement and this uh, funding is required since it's a t it's a uh, borough-owned building. Uh, below that, $12,000 is the reforestation project. Um, this is that uh, series of woods uh, across the, uh, from the parking lot from the MRC fields. Um, what they're doing is they fence it off and they're trying to take out all the invasive species and plant um, the, the native species back there. And, and in some cases, they're named with signage. Uh, below that is the East Wing Professional Services for $10,000. Um, in this very building here, they're uh, restoring on the east side. I believe it's all the way in the basement. There's water damage down there. And so they have a professional organization uh, trying to remediate that situation. The Rosedale, we, we uh, heard from the council member uh, previously, but the Rosedale skating, uh, I have heard, is, is on time to be finished by October. They're reseeding the fields, and they're also... Um, Re-leveling it so it drains more effectively. Um, that's for uh, seventy-five thousand. Uh, once again, that six thousand refers to the the east wing of this building. Um, Bailey Eller, two hundred thousand dollars remediation. Um, the status of that, I've been told, is just starting. Uh, that's uh, they're removing some materials under the fields there at the Bailey Eller School because. Uh, it's not toxic in any way, shape, or form, but I think it's uh, old building supplies. When they built the HQ headquarters in Marstown, they, they dumped the all, all the other building products underground there, and that has to be removed. Apparently, the ordinances are more strict now than they were 20 years ago or 40 years ago. So they're taking that out, and that's what that $200,000 is. Common area maintenance fee for MRC. Uh, I was told that we actually share some of the, road, uh, the roads that go behind the MRC fields. Uh, to the old Exxon property, so that requires maintenance with uh, potholes and, and parking lines and general upkeep, and, and that is what that, uh, those fees are for, the 41 and the 5,900. Um, long-term, uh, let's see, MRC long-term debt uh, is 57,000, that's a semi-annual interest payment. Um, the next line is 2725, that's for uh, some uh, work that they're doing behind where the parking lot is for the pool area and what they're doing is getting a, a reissuing of letter of interpretation for I believe the EPA uh, they're doing a, a study back there to see if it's feasible to perhaps make a dog run back there and that's what that fee is for there um, the next lines 1963 um, Bailey Environmental I believe that's related to the, the remediation 
Uh, below that, MRC fencing. Uh, there's deer fencing that was put up along the, uh, the roadway. Uh, the passive recreation uh, across the street from the MRC fields uh, to keep the deer out, obviously. And there's paths back there that have to be maintained as well. Um, conserve, conservation management plan, I believe, is, is the path uh, upkeep and, 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 uh, and mowing and whatnot. Um, so that leaves a balance of 314,000 that's going out. Um, inflows for this year, the next line, 222,213. It's the remainder of the tax uh, levy that's self explanatory. Field rental, they anticipate 50,000 coming in. Uh, interest is minimal, of course. Um, and then uh, outflows anticipated more, more of the uh, common area maintenance fee for 5,800. Long term debt, uh, principal and interest is 287. Uh, the short term is 165, obviously, and the short term note interest is 16,800. Balance anticipated at the end of the year is 111,325. I did not mention the, what council members mentioned a minute ago about the Green Village uh, school being, um, the property being uh, sold and transferred and a million dollars coming in. That's not, we don't have that yet, but I've been told that it's any day now, any month now, I don't know. But, but by year end. Here, so yeah. that's all I know. Um, any questions on that at all? Any questions for uh, Ben? When you have the balance as of 630.15 and then below anticipated inflows, so the second one on field rentals, you have 50,000 for field rentals and user fees? Yes. That's in addition to the 37185 that's already been collected as of 615? Uh, that's uh, uh, correct. The the yes, yeah, so, so 87 total for the year. That's that's pretty rich, isn't it? I mean, it seemed to me in the past it was more like 70, 65, 70, no? It's been running 85 to 90. This doesn't have, have the, the full yep. support. Oh, all so right. Glad to very, be correct. Very healthy revenue stream. Good. Thank you. And also, shouldn't uh, we can also expect another 100 from the MAF potentially? Um, as far as donations? Right, they committed yeah. 150 a year, and they it, gave 50. It, it's inadvertently left so, off I mean, this page. It, it, yeah, it's good to be worst case scenario. That is on another page, and that's obviously not guaranteed, but yes, that's, that's the implication. So if it comes in, we'll have just over $200,000. Yes, if that's what the math comes out to be, yes. Or the uh, year end balance would be two, 211, no, is. Uh, 211, yeah, if you add, a, add that money back in. Up. Yep. All right, thank you. All right, move on to ordinances for hearing. Bert, will the clerk please read the statement? The okay, ordinance is scheduled for hearing. We're introduced by title and passed on the first reading at a regular meeting of the council held Monday, July the 13th, 2015. All were posted and filed according to law, and copies were made available to the general public requesting same. Okay, I call up ordinances for second reading and ask the clerk to read said ordinances by title. Ordinance 46, 2015, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, amending Chapter 190 of the Madison Borough Code entitled Water to update the water connection fee schedule. I open the hearing for Ordinance 40, 46, 2015. Anyone wish to comment? <laughs> Please step forward. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 46 2015. Second. Any council discussion? Roll we'll call a vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Uh, Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. I declare Ordinance 46 2015 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish the notice there of a newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. Ordinance 47 2015, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $90,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for professional services contract for engineering and design services for improvements to Prospect Street. Greenwood Avenue. I open the hearing for Ordinance 47. Anyone wishing to comment, please step forward. Seeing none, I close the hearing. Mayor, I move Ordinance 47 2015. Second. Council discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. I declare Ordinance 47 2015 adopted and finally passed and ask the clerk to publish notice there of a newspaper and file the ordinance in accordance with the law. And now we're on to invitation for discussion number two, and this is when you may comment on anything. Please step forward, state your name and address, and keep your comments to three minutes or less. Anyone wishing to comment? Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And in 
On to introduction of ordinances. Okay. The ordinance scheduled for first reading has a hearing date set for Monday, August the 10th, 2015. It'll be posted in the Madison Eagle, published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call ordinances for first reading. Ask the clerk, borough clerk to read said ordinances by title. Ordinance 48, 2015, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison, amending Chapter 155 of the Madison Borough Code entitled Sewers to update the sewer connection fee schedule. Mayor, I move Ordinance 48 2015. Second. Any council discussion? A roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? <laughs> yes. All right, consent agenda resolutions. Would clerk please read the following statement? Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure is supported by a certification of availability of funds. Any resolution requiring discussion will be removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Mayor, I move a consent agenda resolutions R224 through R232. Second. Any discussion or any that need to be pulled? Okay, roll call vote, please. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Mayor, I'll be voting yes to all except R229, which I'll be abstaining. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Okay, there is no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers. Public safety, $23,380.60. Health and public assistance, $9,769.38. Public works and engineering, $156,558.89. Community affairs, $4,719.73. Finance and borough clerk, $183,803.20. Um, and utilities, $902,964.58. Total is $1,281,196.38. Mayor, I move the vouchers. Second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Mr. Catalanello? Yes. Mr. Landrigan? Yes. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Just uh, two quick things on our new business. A uh, reminder that there is only one meeting in August, which will be August 10th. And we have moved our September 14th meeting, uh, which conflicts with the Jewish holiday, to Wednesday, September 16th. So please mark your calendars accordingly. And uh, Ben, you get honors tonight. Since, oh, yes, uh, I do. Yes. Second to last, right? Yep. I have a motion to adjourn. <laughs> Second. Okay. Thank you all. I'm John to the cover of this. Yeah. Uh, oh. Gonna go on this space needle. Seattle. Seattle. Never been there before. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Seattle and Portland. Is it a what? Seattle. 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 Seattle.